So it's day two here in Wales, I'm back in this glorious rainforest. Um, now, judging by the forecast last night, we were kind of quite hopeful for a, a bit of fog this morning, which hasn't materialised, which is a bit of a shame, um, because as we've, as we've wandered around here and just realised just how phenomenal this place could be um, under the right conditions, your imagination starts to run wild and you, you just really want to experience it, and partic particularly because our time here is quite limited. Uh, you just you just wish that you just have that one day, just that one day where it all comes together. Uh, but not to worry, I don't think it's going to happen this week. Uh, sun's coming for the next three days. Um, so today at the minute all we've got is flat grey cloud, um, which is okay, I can work with that. It's not going to give me, um, you know, images that are going to really excite me, but I'm certainly going to enjoy the process of exploring the woodland a little bit more, getting to know some new areas and kind of getting quite excited by uncovering more potential instead but i'm going to still i'm still going to take a few shots because it's important to do that um even if i don't feel it's going to be something that i'm going to be proud to publish or go into a portfolio or anything like that it's just nice to go through the process of practicing composition and getting some records of different areas within the woodland that i feel that i might want to come back to um, but i think what i'm going to do is I can hear the stream down there. I want to see if I can get down a little bit lower where it's perhaps a little bit more damp. There might be some nice mossy twisted trees. Um, so yeah, I'll see what I can go and find down there. We ended up with a brief spell of rain which really helped me to capture this image that certainly has some appealing elements with the framing, texture of the bracken and the fantastic mossy boulders and sessile oaks leading us down to the light filled space. Of course, it could be better with some foggy conditions, but what exactly is better? I'm trying my best to move away from weighing myself down with too many thoughts of what could be better and instead having a mindset of, actually, at this moment in time, this is precisely the photograph that I need to take. The act of capturing this scene and others is preparation and practice. It's the building blocks towards being able to make the most of those particularly special moments that we all crave. So this morning wasn't particularly successful in terms of taking photographs, but it's very enriching in different ways because the conditions, they weren't, they weren't ideal. I did prefer the conditions yesterday. So rather than trying to force photographs, um, which I might kind of feel a little bit indifferent about, I just took the opportunity to hike and explore more of the forest and pinpoint areas which I particularly liked that I want to go back to, try and get a good feel and understanding for the lay of the land and the characteristics of the trees and trying to visualize it perhaps even how it might look at a different time of year and it's I don't know it might seem crazy to invest all this time um, not taking pictures but that's the type of long-term view which and commitment which I really do believe is needed for successful woodland photography um, because there's a lot of complexity there's a lot to deal with a lot to take and there's a lot to learn um, and that takes time um, and I'm perfectly <laughs> perfectly willing and perfectly content in using these few days to learn, to discover, to find places uh, and hopefully get some nice images but if not I'll come back another time that's absolutely fine. So yeah I enjoyed exploring I do absolutely love it there but um, after a few hours we decided to head back, refuel, rest a little bit and then what I really wanted to do was explore and see if I could find somewhere which I just knew nothing about you know, we should, couldn't really find anything about on the internet. I just wanted to get out, drive, pull up somewhere that, look, that looked interesting and go for a walk because I, I don't know, I just get this huge sense of fulfillment when I just discover somewhere. You know, it's not like, obviously it's been discovered by other, and walked by other people before, but that sense of discovering somewhere new, which there's no history, uh, there's no images that you've seen before in the back of your mind. It's just walking up into somewhere and just feeling that magic and just having that vibe um, and that excitement when you walk to somewhere and think, oh my, oh my word, this this is good. I cannot wait to take images here. 
and that's exactly what's just happened. I feel incredibly lucky to just walk up this path and discover this oak woodland and it's similar again in terms of all these sessile oaks but they seem much shorter so lower down we've got these lower reaching branches twisting fantastic character yeah it's just an incredibly rich environment um, and i'm quite excited by this um, and it's not as extensive as the forest where which we've been exploring but there's huge potential here huge potential so yeah, I'm not. I, I can't promise I'm going to take any pictures, but um, I'll stop talking, walk around, get to know this place a little bit more. Um, yeah, but yeah, feeling feeling really good about this. It's very good indeed. So I've come across quite a nice little arrangement of trees. It's a very, very intimate scene. It's a bit of a concept shot, and I guess I call it a concept shot because clearly this location is going to lend itself very nicely to some moody conditions. Um, so I'm gonna make the most of today in terms of just taking some concept shots, practicing some compositions, and getting to another location. But I just, and when I, when I say getting to another location, I mean, there's quite a few things that I've noticed already, other than the character of the oak trees. Uh, a lot of the woodland floor has very young silver birch trees. So in autumn time, when all these small low level leaves turn yellow, it's going to look absolutely fabulous. Um, but obviously foggy misty conditions are going to work well. But winter time will be fabulous too, because as we start to lose the leaves, it's going to really show off some of the very kind of dynamic twisted shapes of some of those trees so I'd love to see it in winter time and just the bare bones bare bones skeleton of the trees and all that structure um, and it'll work really well in snow as well I would think so uh, yeah yeah really enjoying this location there's a lot to take in uh, I'm just trying a quick shot here I don't know what it is I seem to be gravitating towards square crops recently but I don't that's not on purpose I think it's just more that I look at a scene I like it and then when I actually start to analyze it I was like well yeah it kind of works as a square so um, there's just a little arrangement of trees here a little bit of variety some are kind of have green moss on some have some of the brown moss some in the background have ivy you can see some of the vines wrapped around the tree through the center of the image there there's some nice mossy rocks leading off down to the left um, there's quite a bright area over to the right hand side I'm very conscious of that and I know that it's just a touch too bright so I just need to make sure that I control the exposure for that um, but being consciously aware of it means that when I come to post processing I'll just take the edge off that in post just to help with the balance uh, of the light through the scene but yeah I really do like the kind of ivy through there um, so I've positioned that centrally and it's quite difficult actually getting the separation between all the trees in the scene but yeah, it's quite nice, it's quite nice and um, obviously it is going to work much better to soften it with some uh, foggy conditions but I'm just really enjoying taking these photographs anyway um, and actually taking the time to, to sit down, analyse the scene is a really important process even if I'm not happy with the image just to take that time in, in a new location is very important. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably show that I think <laughs> unless I come across something better. Um, Meg's still pretty tired from this morning, she's just chilling out in the moss behind. But yeah, I'll keep walking, keep in enjoying and uh, hopefully find something else. I'm very happy with this as a composition. I think it's a lovely dynamic and characterful grouping of oaks that I've spent time to separate for optimum flow and balance through the scene. I initially visualised a square but then decided it needed a bit more room to the left for better balance of light, space and to bring in more of those lovely squiggly branches. The light was far from ideal but the key thing here is that when I'm fortunate enough to return to this woodland under atmospheric conditions, I can revisit this shot knowing what I want to achieve and then hopefully capturing my vision. Equally, I think there's some great potential with this composition, which is a connected shot because it makes a feature of some of the fantastic oak trees used in the background of the previous image. 
I'm sorry to disrupt the flow here, but I wanted to address something within my own narrative which was bothering me a little bit. A common thread through some of my work is the use and mentioning of foggy and misty conditions, but I wanted to make something very clear. Even though I sometimes lament about the absence of such conditions, fog is not the secret to successful woodland photography. You know, good conditions are nothing more than an ingredient in a whole array of factors which sometimes will collectively amount to the right recipe. But fog is often not needed, in fact, some of my favourite images are taken under flat light. It's about being able to connect with the scene you're presented with and understand what you want to achieve based upon a thoughtful interpretation of what you perceive to be complementary to the subject. Saying that fog is the key would be like saying that all that Ben Horn needs in Zion is reflected light, or all that Rachel Talibat needs is stormy weather, or perhaps all that Sean Tucker needs is hard light and shadow. Obviously that's ridiculous because anyone can shoot in good conditions, but to use that component together with multiple other thought processes, skills and techniques, that's the key. You know, a great image typically doesn't just happen by pointing the camera at something that looks good and choosing the appropriate settings. There are usually many layers that build to a specific moment, which might include exploring, discovering, scouting, experience, building an intimate knowledge, understanding, empathy, visualizing, failures, further attempts, composition, settings, and capture. But at the very core of all this is heart and soul. Just that genuine connection to an environment and that feeling, not a formula which allows you to interpret a scene in such a way that cohesively combines all the elements to create what you perceive to be a successful image. You know, it's not a successful woodland photograph for me just because of fog. It's not successful for Rachel Talibat just because of storm imaging. And it's not the light alone that makes it successful for Sean, Ben, Tom and lots of other photographers. It's successful because of that investment of time and invest in a piece of yourself in the landscape so that you understand what conditions work for you, but most importantly, why. And then using those conditions as part of a broader skill set that's been developed and matured with time. You know, no amount of gear or fiddling with knobs on your camera is going to make the real difference. So if you're struggling with woodland photography, then I urge you not to wait for fog, but to get out there now because Trying, failing, understanding and practicing in all weathers will make the difference. And that goes for any form of landscape photography. Anyway, I'm glad I've got that off my chest, but if you'd like to continue this conversation and deep dive into other creative conversations, and I'm sure there'll be ample opportunity to do so during my Scotland workshops. I've just announced four new dates for 2020. They are all in Torridon, but that's for good reason, because it's such a fantastic and diverse landscape. There's so much to photograph, it's not just about woodland. And the time that I've invested there makes it a very effective and efficient teaching environment. Uh, there has been bookings for all four days, but there is still availability. Um, so if you'd like to have a look at my website for more information, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but thank you very much for watching this episode. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you kind of understand what I'm trying to say in this last bit as well. But yeah, thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. And as always, I hope to see you for the next one.